Good evening, universe. Tonight, I'm going to be doing a quick review of the School for Good and Evil trilogy written by Saman Chenani. This is going to be a spoiler-free review in that I won't be including any major plot points or character development, but I will talk a little bit about what the series is about and that sort of thing. So if you like to avoid that stuff completely, then it's weird that you clicked, but now is a good time to leave if that is the case. So what I'm going to be talking about are the uh, first three books in the series, so the original trilogy, The School Years. These books are about two young girls, Agatha and Sophie. Sophie is this beautiful young lady. I think they're about 14-ish when the book series starts. Sophie is just this gorgeous blonde girl uh, and she's very aware of how beautiful she is. And her best friend, Agatha, her best friend Agatha has dark, like kind of lanky, sometimes described as kind of greasy hair and these big old bug eyes. She lives in a graveyard and is generally considered by her town to be kind of a weirdo and kind of an outcast. They live in a town where every four years, two children get kidnapped. It's called Gavaldon. This is not a spoiler. Again, this is at the very beginning of the first book. Uh, it begins with Sophie trying to get herself kidnapped because what they know and what they think of the kidnappings is that the kids are taken to the school for good and evil and Sophie is positive that she's meant to be a princess. She wants to get kidnapped so that she can go to the school for good and meet a prince and fall in love forever and never have to live in this town this stupid small town with these stupid small people. So she has a set of good deeds that she tries to do and that is how she uh, befriends Agatha. She notices that Agatha is alone and friendless and Sophie comes up to her and as a good deed becomes her friend. That's about where the book kicks off with Sophie doing the good deed of being friends with Agatha and hoping that that later that night she will be kidnapped to be taken for the school. Agatha is not super keen on this plan. The rest of the book follows their adventures dealing with the new fairy tale world that they get exposed to thanks to the attempted kidnapping of Sophie. It's a series that has a lot of fairy tale tropes. It's set in a world where people get trained to be part of fairy tales. While it doesn't necessarily subvert the tropes exactly, it does play with them in new and interesting ways. So I really liked that about the first book. I absolutely tore through it. It went to some wild places. These books are structured to have like a medium level of action going on throughout it. And then just like a crazy skyrocket of epiphanies and information at the end, even more so than many other books are designed to do. So the climax isn't just like a regular bump. It's like a like that. So if you want to read these books, be prepared for that kind of ride. They are pretty hefty for middle grade books. Let's see. What is this? Uh, about 500 pages on the first book. The other two are not as long, but you go through them really quick. It's very readable, very enjoyable, um, super fun. I love the main characters, Sophie and Agatha. I think they're both great. They develop in some really cool ways that I really enjoy. There's a third character and his name is Tedros. And I've mentioned him in one of my videos before in the uh, intense hope that he gets less annoying over time or at least isn't in the story as much. And I will say that book three delivered on one of those two fronts. So I was pretty pleased with that conclusion to the trilogy. I will also say that in terms of one of the main characters development, I absolutely love the last line that she gets to say. It's actually the last line of the third book. It was super satisfying to have her say this particular line. Super satisfying to have it be the ending. I absolutely loved it. I definitely think 
that his writing has improved over the course of the book. Probably the second one is my least favorite, partially because I didn't like any of the new villains that they introduced and the central battle was to me kind of strange, but then it resolved in a even more bizarre way. So look forward to that if you want to read the series. But if you read book two and you feel like, eh, this series has kind of fallen off, I definitely suggest giving book three a chance because it really comes back around with some loose plot threads and character development and just a plot that really drives forward in an intriguing way. I started reading it as a lighthearted little break after reading The Wicked King because I really wanted something to kind of, as much as I love The Wicked King by Holly Black, the relationship between the main character and her love interest is a little intense. And so I wanted to have like a lighthearted, fun little break from that. Uh, pro tip, if you want this for that, no. It's not. It's not that. In the first couple of chapters, there's like a death of a character and I just wasn't prepared for that. However, I'm still glad that I read it. Um, it was still a lot of fun, an extremely satisfying conclusion to the trilogy. I will be moving forward with the second half of the series, which is the Camelot Years. The fourth book is called Quests for Glory, and I'm super excited to read that in a little while. I am going to take a little break from the series so that I can finish more of the rest of my physical TBR, but I'm excited to get back to it, excited to see where the conclusion goes, especially because it seems like his writing is getting a little bit better and a little bit more interesting getting a little bit more depth with each book. So I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. Overall, I really enjoyed the School for Good and Evil. I think it was a lot of fun. And if you enjoy kind of tropey, fairy tale fun stuff, then this would probably be a good match for you. If you happen to be looking for a new magic school book series for any reason at all, um, I would definitely suggest these as one that you should check out. Again, highly recommend giving it until the third book at least. Uh, I definitely feel like some of his best character work is in there, but the first two books are still definitely a, a fun introduction to the world and the characters and uh, kind of setting up the stakes for what's going down in book three. It is definitely a lot faster paced than um, a lot of other middle grade book series that I've read. I would say it even has a faster pace than like the Percy Jackson books or similar ones. So they are extremely quick. A lot happens in the books, so it can be easy to kind of lose track of what's going on. There are a lot of characters who would be referenced throughout the series, um, and that can be a little bit confusing if you aren't used to having like a huge cast. There are only three main characters though, and the rest will kind of be framed in contexts that make it pretty clear what's going on. So even if you're not great with big casts, the books make it pretty easy for you to follow along. I definitely feel that the books leave the reader with plenty to think about. So rather than coming down cleanly on this is good and this is evil or any of the other tropes that they mess with, Rather than deciding for you or stating clearly this is what this is and stuff like that, it kind of leaves it up to the reader. Some people I think found that annoying. Um, I was reading some reviews where people were talking about how things were not subverted harshly enough for them. I don't really agree with that. I think that while there were definitely some points that could use some extra clarification or that we could have gotten more depth from, I do think it's clear where the author stands on certain things. And also having it open as a discussion, I think is also very useful, especially for the intended age audience. These are middle grade books. So I think having these open ended of like, what is good and what is evil and what are all these other things, the way that he opens up these questions and kind of addresses them without giving exact answers. I think that is really good for the intended age range and probably a great conversation starter if you're like a parent and you have maybe like a 10 to 12 year old who is reading the book series. Then you guys can have a nice discussion about it and really dig in. That's pretty much all I have to say for this evening. Thank you so much for joining me for this review and have a good night universe.